Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Chantel and today I am not going to talk about books. <laughs> um, today I'm going to do um, a, a little chat slash review slash discussion of a couple of movies that I've seen recently. Because um, I haven't done one of these in a while and I feel like it's time. Um, and I just, I've seen a couple of good movies recently that I enjoyed and want to recommend, I suppose. Um, because, um, I'm actually, I'm probably going to title this video, um, Movies That Feel Like a Punch to the Face. Um, as a, basically just a kind of a funny contrast with my last movie video, which was movies that made, that feel like a warm hug. Um... Mostly just because both of these movies are more adults, they're more violent, they're more like along the lines of thriller or action movie um, type films. Um, but I want to talk about these films particular, in particular because both of these films are sort of smaller, lower to mid-budget films by sort of more independent directors um, and, you know... Uh, or more or newer directors and they're both fun genre movies but um neither of them is affiliated with a bigger billion dollar franchise ip um they're both just fun movies that are very situated in a in a specific genres and they just they just are they just exist and um it can be very difficult <laughs> to find an audience for movies like this today um because i think i think there's a lot of different reasons for this actually um but one of them i think is just simply that we all know movies are expensive to go to movie theaters have really you know raise their prices to obscene levels lately um and so for a lot of people it's just not worth it to go to the movies very often and when they do they feel like they need to see like the big ones you know the tent poles the blockbusters um to sort of get their money's worth you know it's like if you can only afford to go to the movies a few times a year what are you gonna see well you're gonna go to see Denis Villeneuve directing Dune you're gonna go see the latest Marvel movie. You're maybe gonna catch, you know, the latest Blumhouse horror film, um, but you might not see something like this. So I do kind of wanna highlight and recommend, you know, um, films like this that are more, slightly more independent. Um, and not just the big blockbuster tent poles that everybody knows about and is seeing. So the first movie I want to talk about is Love Lies Bleeding, which is um, a honestly I would say it fits pretty pretty easily into the noir genre, sort of a noir crime drama thing. Um, but it's lesbians <laughs> and it stars Kristen Stewart um and Katie O'Brien um and I was interested in this primarily because I really like Kristen Stewart um I think both she and Robert Pattinson have had really interesting careers um since they did Twilight you know for being these two actors very young actors who were sort of discovered by this you know sort of big um bland, mediocre franchise aimed at teenagers. Um, both of them have had really fascinating career trajectories um, and both have clearly made it a point to work on smaller projects, on indie projects, on passion projects, right? Um, and so I'm always interested to see what either of these actors does. And um, so I was, you know, when I heard Kristen Stewart was in this sort of lesbian crime drama uh, directed by Rose Glass, I was like, okay, sure, I'm into this. Um, I'm actually, this is my first Rose Glass film as well. I don't think this is her debut feature. Um, this is the first film that I've seen directed by her. Um, and it's very good. It's very stylish. Um, it's very adult. It's very, um, it's very confident, I would say. Both of these movies 
are very confident movies considering um sort of the the sort of, i guess relative inexperience of their directors um so yeah kristen stewart plays uh, a woman who um is her father is basically a crime lord played by ed harris by the way very creepy role extremely good as the villain of this piece um and uh, a, a sort of drifter comes into town katie o played by katie o'brien who is a sort of an amateur bodybuilder um, the two fall in love um, and work to train her up for a competition in Las Vegas. And then um, bad things happen because of uh, Kristen Stewart's sort of connection to, uh, you know, her sort of family ties to these to these criminals. Um, and so it's a very classic noir setup of the drifter who comes into town and then uh, sort of falls for... Um, someone and that someone winds up being a uh, part of like this bigger criminal family that then drags that that sort of drifter into the sort of crime drama-ness of it all. Um, so I don't want to say too much more about the plot of this movie because like any good noir you kind of just want to watch it unfold and and see how it happens and how it develops um, but I will say um, who I particularly thought was a standout in this film was Katie O'Brien. I had actually seen her in something previous to this because she was in a single episode of the most recent season of The Mandalorian, um, where she played one of the so-called reformed uh, imperialists, imperials, um, who sort of messes with the, the the doctor in that one episode that was kind of a weird divergent episode where we followed the the doctor guy um in his sort of working for the new republic um and i thought she was a real standout in that one episode that she was in and i was really interested to see what she would do next and it turns out it was this and she's incredible in this movie her character in this movie is really going through it <laughs> <laughs> on pretty much every imaginable level she's fallen in love with Kristen Stewart which I mean who wouldn't and but she's also getting she's also like got this ambition to win this bodybuilding competition Las Vegas she's really focused on that but then she gets more uh you know some some bad stuff goes down she gets more and more emotionally involved with Kristen Stewart's character and falls sort of deeper and deeper into this sort of net of criminal conspiracies and things going on and there's murder and there's blackmail and all kinds of shenanigans happening um and Katie O'Brien really um I mean she's really working it through this entire movie um she has a lot to do and she does it extremely well um so yeah, overall, I think this is this is a very good movie. Um, as with you know everything I talk about here, if you're concerned about like trigger warnings or things like that, I always recommend that you look up the rating and what specifically it's rated for, uh, and why, and any applicable warnings. Um, but I think this is very worth your time um, if you have a chance to see it. Um, I think it's a very enjoyable sort of neo-noir. Um, it's sort of kind of vaguely set in the 80s, so it has a very strong aesthetic to it, uh, a period aesthetic. Um, and yeah, it's it's a very good um, sort of emotional roller coaster. It gets a little weird at times. There's definitely some drug use <laughs> and it gets a little weird at various points. Um, but it's quite good, and I think it's a great showing from Rose Glass and from all the actors involved. Um, so that definitely comes recommended. Um, the second film I want to talk about is Monkey Man. Uh, this is Dev Patel's directorial debut. Um, if you don't know who Dev Patel is, I suggest you find out quickly um, because he is uh, a very good actor. He's been around for several years now doing some really interesting projects, and this is the first time he's directed a film. Um, and this um, film is a classic revenge thriller slash action movie um, in which... Dev Patel plays a character who um, 
lost uh, his mother as a child and he is seeking revenge for the uh, against the the people responsible for her death um, again this is for being a directorial debut this film was very solid right Dev Patel is very confident in what he's doing he knows the genre that he's operating in um, he knows the th he knows exactly what he wants to do and he does it very effectively um, I will say I had some issues uh, with uh, I think he goes a little bit too hard on the shaky cam in some of the action scenes personally I prefer the camera to be a little bit steadier during a good action scene because it makes it easier to actually follow what's happening <laughs> and I want to fully appreciate like the fight choreography that's happening so I thought sometimes during the action scenes that the camera was a little bit too wild and crazy and I was having a hard time following but otherwise it's a very good very fun action movie there's a lot of gags in it which I really appreciate I like an action movie that doesn't take itself so seriously that it's afraid to make jokes once in a while there's a really great gag um, with a window um, and of course, um, in, you know, true sort of action movie fight scene style, there's some pretty great and gross deaths. <laughs> um, and, you know, the fighting, it's it, it, both of these films, I would say, are very visceral. Sometimes, sometimes literally, they're very visceral. Um, this one also gets a little bit weird sometimes, in part because of some drug use. <laughs> so again, like, as always with anything, both of these films are rated R. You, if, you're, if you're unsure of anything, you definitely want to check out, you know, any possible trigger warnings or, you know, any, uh, the you know, even just reading, like, the reasons for the, the actual rating on the MPA website. Um, you know, I always recommend making sure that it's not going to upset you or bother you before you see it but um you know especially this one this one deals with some trauma um obviously uh Dev Patel's character is highly traumatized by the horrific things that he saw as a child um and you definitely see some of that in flashback uh as a in addition to the um you know the fighting and the brutality in the sort of present day of the film um this is also interestingly a pretty uh a, a relatively political film um he's sort of taking jabs at um the sort of the sort of right-wing theocratic um political party in india um it's not named explicitly it's all fictionalized in the film but it's clearly what he's doing i don't know a ton about indian politics but i do know that they do have this sort of rising wave of this sort of theocratic um authoritarian political party that's been sort of gaining power and gaining uh yeah gaining power in that country and he is definitely taking some jabs at that at the and the general idea of this this sort of theocratic religious religiously fueled um uh authoritarianism um, that a lot of countries are experiencing right now, including mine, you know, so like it's it's definitely relevant also to an American audience. Um, in fact, that's the reason why it ended up um, getting a theatrical release instead of getting dumped on Netflix, um, because Netflix was originally going to put it out. Um, it was originally just going to be a Netflix release um, and uh, probably wasn't going to have a theatrical release at all. But then um, Netflix got cold feet and dropped it because of the um, political overtones uh, of the film because they didn't they don't want to offend their relatively large Indian audience um, and so that's that's the point at which Jordan Peele said well I'll handle this then and we'll we'll get it distributed theatrically um, so it's an interesting trajectory that this film has had and I think in part because of the difficulties in getting it made and in getting it distributed, I do think it's extra important to like try to support films that are doing these things. Um, especially again, it's like Dev Patel is, you know, he's a minority voice in Hollywood. He's not white. <clears throat> 
Um, also, he there's some really great um, transgender representation in this film. The Hijra community uh, in India is represented and they're super badass. Um, I would uh, love to have these uh, these folks at my uh, on my side in a fight for sure. Um, so yeah, it's one of those movies that like it's super fun. Um, if you like, I know the comp is made a lot, but yeah, if you like the John Wick movies, you'll probably like this because it's pulling from a lot of the same uh, it, sources. It's pulling. F it's he's got a lot of the same. Um, inspirations I guess you could say um in terms of what it's pulling from and like John Woo films and Hong Kong action movies and things like that um it's very much within that kind of genre so um I definitely highly recommend this both of these films again if you're into sort of more adult oriented genre films that are <laughs> not just these big franchise movies um you know I think the movie landscape today, especially in, in the United States, is it's tough. It's tough, right? Especially this week. Like this week alone, we've had stories about how Francis Ford Coppola is is is, is having trouble finding a distributor for his new movie. Francis Ford Coppola, like, why is this guy not able to get his movie funded, right? Why are these um, really important directors, really prestigious directors? not able to get and 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 you know studio heads are like well we can't make money off of that you you don't think you can make money off of a francis ford coppola movie like really and also even if you can't like this is where the sort of the art and capitalism thing kind of you know they come into conflict with each other sometimes because like something that may not be like marketable quote unquote uh or you know that may not be able to make a profit right a, a, a cash profit it still might be worth seeing it still might be worth being out in the world and having an existence right and i think that's true of these films too right from both of these sort of young again more younger sort of less experienced directors or directors that are just starting out and they're more independent and they're doing these things because they love movies and these are passion projects and they just want to make good movies that sit firmly within these genres. And so I definitely want to highlight movies like that, recommend them to people, um, get the word out, and hopefully encourage people to see more of these movies uh, when you get a chance, um, because they're worth seeing. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, like, I also liked Dune Part 2. Like, yes, I think the Dune movies are great, but everybody's seen those movies. They're not having trouble at the box office. Movies like Love Lies Bleeding, movies like Monkey Man are great movies, and they are having a lot more trouble at the box office. So, you know, that's kind of where I want to put my effort if I can put my effort anywhere, really. And also, you know, they're just good movies that I want to talk about, so there's that. Um, so anyway, that's my sort of reviews slash discussions of Love Lies Bleeding, directed by Rose Glass, and Monkey Man, directed by Dev Patel, both of which are, have, either have been or are currently in theaters, at least in the United States, um, and I definitely recommend folks check them out if you're interested in that kind of thing, and you, ha and they're available for you to see in your local area, um, and, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say, really, um, if you've seen, if there's any great movies that you've seen recently, um, either in theaters or on streaming or DVD or whatever, let me know in the comments below. Have you seen these movies? Are you interested in these movies? Um, you know, and then do the usual thing, I guess, if you want to like this video, subscribe to my channel, whatever, that's fine. Uh, and, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.